independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment, maker of over 400 products in 28 plants from coast to coast. Autolite products include dependable stay-full batteries, horns, electric windshield wipers, relays, ignition coils, spark plug wire, and battery cables. Autolite also makes starting motors, distributors, generators, instruments and gauges, and a complete line of ignition engineered standard and resistor type spark plugs. Yes, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. I can't move. I've been stubbled. Keep your hands out of there. You want to lose them? <laughs> <laughs> that is delicious. What's the problem, Mrs. Haskell? It's Mrs. Haskell's very own atomic bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to go in there next door, Everett, and tell him to quit this racket at once. It's New Year's, Myrtle. What's that to me? I'm sick, sick. I'm a sick bedridden woman. But the one night in the whole year, Myrtle, there are parties all over the apartment house. Oh, you think of everybody's comfort but mine. I do the best I can. I've done the best I can for you ever since you've been sick. Ten years. I've waited on you hand and foot. Yes, you leave me alone all day long. Well, I've got to make a living. Why, you avoid me deliberately. You can't wait to get out of the house. You creep out of here in the morning before it's even daylight. I've got to be at the post office at 6 o'clock, Myrtle. Yes, and I'm here alone all day long. Why, you never telephone me. You never even think of me. I think of you, Myrtle. I can't get you out of my mind. I wave packages in the post office all day long. Think of you. Of my life. My life with you. Why? You want me dead. But I'm not going to die. Oh, no, Everett. I'll live on and on. I'll live to bury you, Everett, Chelsea. Oh, go on in there and tell him to quit, will you? You feeble excuse for a man. <laughs> got your hands full with that wife of yours, but tonight you're going to forget all your troubles. Now, my husband said that I was to bring you over. Are you sick, Mr. Kelsey? No, uh, it's my wife. She's not feeling well. 
Mr. Kelsey, you know, I've lived next door to you for 15 years now and never even heard of her feeling well. She doesn't try to get well. I'm uh, sure she tries. Uh, good night, Mrs. Haskell. You know, my doctor said there's nothing really wrong with her. She doesn't know. It's all psychological, he says. She just wants to play lady and she wants somebody to pamper her and to wait on her. And we all know who that somebody is, don't we? If you will excuse me, Mrs. Haskell. Oh, listen, Mr. Kelsey. We all think you're a, a pretty fine fella. Now, get wise, will you? My husband warned me not to say anything about this to you at all, but I'm going to because I like you, see? Listen, Mr. Kelsey. She gets up out of bed when you're not home. Well, it's just about time somebody opened your eyes. You know, lots of times I hear the vacuum sweeper going in here. I come and I knock on the door and it shuts off and she won't answer the door. I've always cleaned the house. She can't move. Well, check with the drugstore. She orders candy from there all the time. She has to open the door for the boy who brings it. My wife is unable to get out of bed, Mrs. Haskell. Oh, Mr. Kelsey, you just go on thinking that way if it, if it makes you happy. But I'm telling you to open up your eyes because it's a brand new year and your neighbors love you. A brand new year. Yes, now come on. Come on next door and have a drink with us because you deserve it. No, not now. I, I've got to get Mrs. Kelsey her milk first. Oh. Well, come over when you get a chance. Come on, have fun. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. sedatives for 10 years. Tonight she will have taken an overdose. She was depressed. She didn't want to go into the new year being an invalid. Everybody knows I've been devoted to her. No suspicion will fall on me. It will be called suicide. I'll be notified at the post office. going on out there, Everett? Why don't you go out and see, dear? What? Are you out of your mind? You know that I can't. What's that black stuff on your mouth? Huh? What? You must be seeing things tonight. Is it candy, Myrtle? Does a drugstore send candy around to you? You must know, yes. I need a little luxury now and then. Do you deprive a poor bedridden woman even that? How do you get to the door to get your candy when they deliver it, Myrtle? Answer me. What's the matter with you tonight, anyway? Have you been drinking? It's the new year, Myrtle. All the old years. The years you had me feeding you, pampering you, worrying over you. They're gone, Myrtle, forever. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. You haven't been fooling poor, patient, stupid me all these years, have you? You're out of your mind. Really? What's wrong with this milk? It's a funny color. It burnt a little. Uh, <laughs> no, you didn't have the nerve, would you? <laughs> nerve? To poison me. I don't know. Maybe I would. <laughs> Listen to them in there. They're happy. Happy, looking forward to a new year. What have I got to look forward to? Nothing. You've given me nothing in my life ever, Kelsey. Nothing. Except my paycheck week after week. Paycheck? Yes. What about love? What about romance? What about passion? You've cheated me out of life. Did you dig that out of the movie magazine? Huh? Why, I've had to imagine. I've had to dream a whole life of love, romance, and glamour. 
lying here an invalid in bed, day after day. After You're day. no invalid. Oh, how dare you? Speak. You clawed. Get out. Get out. Speak. You clawed. You swine. You. Oh, no. Hello. Hello. Who are you? I can't hear you. You... You saw... Saw me do... Why didn't I what? Pull my shades down. You saw what I did in the kitchen? Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Marshall for Autolite. We'll get back to suspense in just a moment, but before we do, I have a little story that I'd like to tell you personally. It's one of those little cartoons of ours that I thought you'd like to see. Now, it concerns an old friend of ours, Speedy Sam, the friendly delivery man, and a real catastrophic thing that happened to him one day. Now, you see, Speedy Sam had a lot of orders to deliver this particular day, so he loaded up his truck, he jumped in, and he started out. Ah, but look what happened. His car started hopping like a complaining customer. Yes, sir, it was worn out spark plugs that caused all the trouble, and poor Sam wound up looking like a very sad ex. Well, I don't expect your car ever to start making scrambled eggs. But you know, friends, it is a fact that if your spark plugs aren't functioning properly, you may find that your car is sluggish, lacks power, wastes gas, slow on the pickup, and not up to a par on the hill. So it pays to have your spark plugs checked regularly. And you know this is a very smart time of year to do it when you're having your car serviced for the good driving days ahead. Now, when you do, be sure to look for this sign right here. Because that's where you'll find a qualified Autolite spark plug dealer. And he'll be ready to compare your spark plugs with this exclusive Autolite plug check indicator. You see, by checking the firing nose of your spark plug with this handy indicator, he can tell in a jiffy, if your spark plugs are right for your style of driving. Now, if he finds that cleaning and adjustments are necessary, and incidentally, for best results, it's a good idea to have your spark plugs cleaned every 5,000 miles or so, he has the proved Autolite spark plug cleaner to do the job. And he also has the latest information on how to do it quickly and efficiently. Now, if it turns out that replacements are necessary, He'll recommend the proper type of ignition-engineered Autolite spark plug, standard or resistor, best suited for your car and your type of driving, to give you smoother performance, quick starts, and gas savings. You know, all Autolite spark plugs are designed by the same Autolite engineers who designed the coil, the battery, the distributor, the generator, and all the other important parts that go to make up the complete ignition system used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars. Yes, that's why ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs are tops in quality and tops in performance. So friends, take a tip from me and look for this sign right here where you'll find your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer. Remember, he's the only one who has the exclusive Autolite plug check indicator to give you a quick, accurate recommendation on the proper type of spark plug for your car. And, of course, he's the only one who can offer you your choice of ignition-engineered, resistor, or standard Autolite spark plugs. The spark plugs that are ignition-engineered to work as a perfect team with your car's ignition system. Remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, the 
the second act of Telephone Call, starring Russell Collins. over at our house, and she can lie on the sofa and watch us dance and have fun. You can't let her spoil all your fun, Mr. Kelsey. No, we're going to make a seat for her, like this, see? She can sit right up here and it won't bother her a bit. <laughs> no, 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 please, please, please don't go in there. Why, what's the matter? Well, she, my wife, she doesn't like me disturbed. She's asleep. Oh, are you kidding? Nobody goes to sleep this early on New Year's Eve. <laughs> she does. She hates New Year's. She hates to see the world. The years pass by. Why aren't you going to answer? Leave it alone! That's the funniest thing I've ever heard of in my life. Don't touch it! She's telling you me to drink. Well, who's this? Yeah, what are you talking about? No, this is not Mrs. Kelsey. This is Mrs. Haskell from next door. Who is it? What? Hello? Hello? <laughs> The things people think up to do on New Year's Eve. Oh, what did they want? What did they say? Oh, you kid. They said, we know what you're doing. We saw you. Oh, please, Mrs. Hatch, let's get out of here. Oh, Come on, you must get out of here. Don't you Mrs. Kelsey. <laughs> If she's asleep, all right. Come on. Not bother. Come on, she's asleep. Now, she won't even miss you. And a couple of drinks will do you good. Well, I'll, I'll be with you just in a minute. I, I've got to clean up first. Oh, you promise now. I promise. Okay. Hello. Hello. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Mr. Kelsey, treating your wife like that. We saw what you did. Where are you? Wouldn't you like to know? You're in the building. You can't get away with it, Mr. Kelsey. What floor? What apartment? We're on your floor, but we're not going to tell you what apartment. <laughs> we're driving him nuts. <laughs> Kathy, did you really see what he was doing? Did you? No, I didn't see a thing. You didn't? <laughs> Who else can we call, Kathy, huh? Well, let's call his neighbor, the Haskell. Okay. Gee, this is more fun than going to a circus. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cheaper. I never had so much fun. Hello? Hello? Mrs. Haskell, this is Joan of Arc. Who? Arc, you know. Like an arc, arc, the arc. <laughs> Let's check the party on this deck. I want to go up on the poop oh, deck. Oh, never mind the poop deck. Jim! Oh, um... This ain't Jim, you jerk. Excuse it, mister. She'll kiss anything. Uh, I'm sorry. Say excuse me for the nice man, Isabella. Happy night, nice here. Come on, have, have a drink with us, okay? Don't go yet, mister. Isabella's going to apologize. Apologize. No. Never mind. Wait a minute. You're being rude to the young lady. You apologize to her, see? That's right. Go on, apologize. Shut up. I'm giving the orders. And what do you want? This is a friend of mine. Come on, let's go for a drink. I, I don't drink. I... Oh, come on. We got enough to launch the big mo and her sister. Yeah, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> in such a hurry. We've been invited to a party down the hall. You, me, and Isabella. Isabella? That ain't your real name. 
Can't be. You're, uh, you're a Ruthie type. Maybe even a Shirley, but not Isabella. It'll do, sailor, won't it? I gotta get out of here. You want me to get rough? What do you want of me? Be patient. And stop interrupting. Come on. No. Here, take this. It'll put you in the mood. Them's orders. Drink. And now we're going to the party, the three of us. Did I get sick? Honey, <laughs> Daddy. Come on, honey. 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 Come on, <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you decided to leave your wife for a minute and have some fun. What are you so bashful about? <laughs> come on, you dance with Judy here. Well, honey, come on, let yourself go like right this. Oh, I just adore dancing with an older man. It makes me feel real today, like a middle-aged lady, you know. I'm not sure I recognize your voice. <laughs> of course you don't. I never met you before in my life, Mr. Rowe. Uh, Kelsey, Everett Kelsey. You are Mr. Kelsey? <laughs> You're sore. Yeah. <laughs> well, excuse me for living on me. I'm not sure that I can. Hey, what's the matter with you anyway? It was only a joke. We caught everybody in the building for fun. you Ever heard of it? Who's we? Who else was there? Kathy Proctor and Baby. Directly across the court from my apartment, you saw what I did. I didn't see anything, Mr. Kelsey. It was Kathy over there. Yeah, Kathy, Kathy, yeah. Oh, Kathy, he's having a good time at last. I'm glad. Would you look at that? He's going out to the hall with Kathy Proctor. <laughs> What's the matter? What's up? I wanted to talk to you alone, Miss Proctor. Oh, sure, go ahead. Well, uh... Could we go somewhere where we're alone? Hey, listen here. Uh, no, well, now, don't be worried, Miss Proctor. We're not strangers, you know. We all live in the same building. Well, all right. I live with my aunt down the hall. Huh. She's a professional babysitter. Uh, she must be working late tonight. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sometimes the Lockmans don't get home until after 5 a.m. Yeah. I work for the telephone company. I'm going to be a supervisor someday. Say, what's the matter with you? You're hanging on every word I say. Well, isn't that flattering? Oh, I never say anything important. Uh, perhaps you wouldn't know. Uh, I must have heard your voice before somewhere, Miss Proctor. It sounds very pleasant. <laughs> the telephone company thinks so. The voice with a smile, you know. Well, here's where I live. Sorry, I just can't believe your story, Mrs. Kelsey. I tell you, officer, he tried to poison me. Oh. Look, there is the empty bottle. I saw he acted funny all evening. I was afraid of him. I wouldn't drink the milk when he brought it to me. I just spilled it over myself, pretended. I wanted to see what he'd do when he found out that I hadn't drunk it. Well, look, officer, now I don't know where he's gone, but I want you to go out, and I want you to go and find that man and arrest him for murder. All right, all right, all right. All right, but then go and do it, will you? Get on with it. Oh, wait, help. What's the matter with you, anyway? Your friend said you saw everything I did, Miss Proctor. I don't know what you're talking about. What friend? You let me out of here. Earlier this evening, Miss Proctor, you took the liberty of phoning me. I never... Now I take the liberty of questioning you. I never telephoned you. I... Oh. Oh. You're Mr. Kelsey. Oh, listen. I was only kidding. What did you see me do? Nothing. You're lying. Dad. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. <laughs> Oh, 
the sly old devil. Yeah, Look then. at him, Will. He's trying to kiss her. <laughs> I was trying to fix him up. Long time he had a girl right here in the building. Now, that's the mousy type you gotta look out for, I always say. Second hand you know. wheel. More than my look. Something's wrong over there. That girl's in trouble. Hey, he's trying to choke her. Come on. Come on. You, you lie. You lie, you lie. You saw me pour the poison in her glass. No, no, I didn't. You lie. You saw me murder her. I don't know what you're talking about. You saw me. You saw me. Hey, don't open that door. Don't open that door. All right, yes. I admit it. I killed my wife. I killed my wife. I admit it. No way. But you're not going to get me. That scream. Well, don't just stand there. Go and find don't out. Don't let listen. Don't yell at me. I'm not the husband. Anymore. I'll have you reported. You oh. You see if I don't. I'm going to quit. Well, what is it? I'm afraid we have some bad news for you, Mrs. Kelsey. What? Huh? I thought she couldn't walk. Never mind you. What is it? Your husband thought he poisoned you. There. Now, do you hear that, officer? Isn't that proof enough? I want you to go out there and find the reporters and the photographers. Oh, there's no need for them. Now, they'll be here anyway. They'll, they'll want pictures of your husband's body lying in the courtyard. What? What? Oh! What do you say? and its 96,000 dealers have just brought you another story of suspense. In just a moment, I'll tell you the title of our suspense story for next week and the name of our star. First, I'd like to remind you drivers that Autolite spark plugs are ignition engineered to work as a perfect team with the rest of your car's ignition system. You know they're carried by your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer. So why don't you pay him a visit? And if you find that your car needs replacements, He'll recommend the proper type of ignition engineered Autolite spark plug, standard or resistor, according to the manufacturer's specifications for your automobile and the heat range of its engine. Remember, wherever you see this sign, you'll find an Autolite spark plug dealer. There are thousands of them all over the country, so you shouldn't have any trouble locating one right in your neighborhood. When you visit him, you'll learn why, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.